Welcome, my friends, to the live Sunday edition. It is July 3rd, 2016. And coming up live in studio, David Knight, my co-host, is going to be uh, completing the transmission here today on the eve of July 4th. What is this, 241 years? Like, I should check that. How many years, I just thought of that, has it been since the Declaration of Independence uh, signed on July 4th, 1716? 76. I guess that's 240 years. We need to do the math on that. Here we are, my friends. Thank you so much for joining us. I wanted to have Larry Nichols on today because uh, Larry was on the Friday show. He's one of the consummate Clinton insiders and a whistleblower for more than 20 years, exposing their activities when they became so criminal, uh, really predicting that she wouldn't get indicted and really predicting uh, that they would just uh, accelerate their attacks on free speech. So I wanted to talk with him a few segments about this because it's really unprecedented in modern history to have an administration or someone running for office to be this corrupt. Uh, and now we know the FBI was ordered to tell the press to not uh, report on this or not to film it or tape it when she met with him last week uh, there at the airport in this James Bond style villain rendezvous. And of course they got caught lying about that. And, and this is while Clinton Hillary Clinton and Bill are both under criminal uh, investigation for the foundation, not just not just the emails. And so what is their game plan? Because the media is saying that Lynch said she's going to take what the FBI said and do it. No, she said she's going to look at it, then she'll make the final decision. That's what she actually said. We're going to be playing that later. And, of course, Bloomberg is also reporting that they talked to DOJ folks that say that's the case. So this is a big deal. Uh, decipher this for us, Larry Nichols. You used to run these type of operations for them. What's really going on? What does all this mean? Well, Alex, what it's all about is they, they had to meet to get their deal worked out. And as I told you in the segment Friday, I think they made three deals. Number one, Bill Clinton assured Lynch that if Hillary was elected, she'd get to keep her job. Number one. Number two, she made it clear to Lynch, they handed, I'll bet you he handed her a piece of paper. And in that piece of paper was the information on a couple of the prosecutors showing that they had stuff on them, that if the indictment is dropped and it goes away, but if any of those prosecutors decide to come out and talk about it and tell the truth, they're letting them know they'll be destroyed. And then the third thing is they are working out their arrangement with Lynch to stop conservative, moral Christian people from coming out and, you know, and rioting and posing, you know, protests and such like that. And to have her indict probably a half a dozen of those people and that will shut it down. Well, you're the man to know, and you've been so accurate in the past. My concern is she's actually was saying a few months ago she might arrest people that criticize Muslims, and then she had to backtrack, and she says she wants to censor talk radio. This woman's even more monstrous than Eric Holder. You know, Alex, it's been their goal. You know it. It's been their goal to get rid of this, the First Amendment, to stop the freedom of the speech, and they're going to do it this time. You know, Alex, you and I have talked about it, and I am – more confident than ever, this is the last election we're going to have. This coming up November 3rd is going to be the defining moment for this country. November the 3rd, we're either going to be a communist dictatorship for real, out in the open, or we're going to have a government that takes the first step to get us back Back to this eve of July 4th, 2016, July 3rd transmission. I'm Alex Jones. Coming up live in studio, David Knight, my co-host, is going to have the latest breaking news and analysis. We've got clips uh, of uh, Lynch actually saying she'll make the final determination. Those stories are up on Infowars.com uh, concerning uh, any indictments of Hitlery. Uh, and then we also are going to play clips. We have this... Uh, ABC reporter and others that have gone on national TV and said they were ordered to not videotape or record 
the secret meeting, and it was supposed to be a secret meeting until the media leaked it, uh, between Bill Clinton, who's being investigated along with his wife, and the Attorney General of the United States. I mean, this is just naked, super arrogant, uh, in-your-face, crazy town stuff. And even a lot of the liberal media is having trouble uh, covering this up. But uh, Larry Nichols is here to break this down with us today and uh, tell us what he thinks is coming up next. He was talking about this perhaps being the last election in U.S. history. And I've known Larry Nichols, again, as a big Clinton insider, helped him run for office, was one of their handlers. Uh, until they got so corrupt, he went, he, he, he went out against them. If you don't know who he is, he's the source of a lot of the big stories against him that have turned out to be very accurate. I've been, I've known him 20 years. He's never said that this is probably going to be the last election. But we just see massive escalations in preparation for civil unrest, martial law. This show has a lot of credibility now, not so much because of my, myself or even my great crew, but because the topics we covered a long time ago have been proven to be accurate. Well, we were going off government documents and real issues. I mean, we were telling the truth. But the reason we have the credibility is the globalist program has been confirmed and they are going into high gear. So it's kind of a paradox. People are really waking up. We said the British exit from the euro despite all that propaganda. Uh, a lot of folks are waking up to the new world order and crony capitalism and how they use socialism to control people. But a lot of political correctness is in trouble. But at the same time, man, the tyrants are in central control. So Larry Nichols, lay this out for us where you think this is all going. <coughs> Well, Alex, relative to it being the last election, let's figure this out for ourselves. And I want your audience to be able to justify this as they tell others. Number one, with the massive, massive influx of Muslims, with the illegal Mexicans that are here, when you add those two to the new rule that they're putting in, which is if you've got a driver's license, you can vote. Then when you add to that the felons out of prison that now can vote, there is no way the average middle-class American, oh, there might be elections after November the 3rd, but they're not, that Russia and Cuba have elections. It's not going to be the same. We, Alex, the middle-class American is not going to be relevant anymore. Not in the election process. It's over. Let me ask you this, Alex. Why would you vote in the next election for a Republican in the primary? You now know what you and I have been telling people for years and years and years, but now they can see it for themselves. You go vote in a Republican primary. Why? Because your vote don't count. The delegate is who's going to pick it, not your vote. And they're already introducing us to the, quote, new rules they have in place and the mainstream media goes, of course we shouldn't count votes. Of course votes don't count. The parties, as George Will wrote in the Washington Post, are the sovereigns. They're even calling themselves sovereigns, the new royalty. Maybe delegates, super delegates, will hand down royal baronies to their children. Absolutely. Now, there's one other thing achieved by that meeting with Janet Lynch or whatever. Loretta. Loretta Lynch, I'm sorry. Another thing comes out of that. You see, Alex, everything's moving for the central government plan. It's all moving that away. And by them coming out now and doing what they're doing to put pressure on anybody protesting against Hillary, you know, if she's not indicted, any protest by using indictments and prosecution to shut the people's voice down, guess what they're doing? They're killing Donald Trump. They're doing this now, Alex, to put pressure on the RNC to take the nomination away from Donald Trump. Remember, he doesn't have that nomination yet. And relative to the rules, as you were talking, what is the rule for, you know, remember the 1237? That's bogus. We now That's know. right. And, 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 and by the way, I said they were doing this all along. They admit they were playing possum. They're still saying they're going to try to steal it now uh, during, during the convention. Absolutely. Remember, folks, if you doubt us, just remember this and forget everything else. That whole myth about the 1237, remember, there are no rules for the convention until six days before the convention when the executive rules committee meets. And that's when they'll decide what Trump has to do to get to be the nominee. And I'm telling you, Alex, you know it. 
you know it as well as I do, and you know the person I have on the inside that tells me the things that the RNC leadership's up to. They are planning every way they can to stop Trump from getting that nomination. Friday, I started telling you about 40-40-20. 40 40% that's in politics, that's the law. 40-40-20. 40% love Hillary. There's nothing she can do to make them not love her. 40% hate her. There's nothing she can do to make them like her. It's that 20% that the media calls undecided. I call them don't care. Now, Alex, think about it. They don't care. They're watching football, basketball, going out to bars, playing pool. The only time they care about politics is November the 3rd. You know what they'll do? They'll look at the polls, see who's leading, and they'll go vote for that person. That way they can brag that they voted for the winner. Everything Trump's going to do in this race, starting the day he gets the nomination, if he does, he's going to have to buy you know, during the primary, Alex, Trump got all this free media. Well, he's going to get free media in the general election, sure enough, but it's all going to be bad. And if he wants to get to that 20% that will actually decide the outcome of this race, he's going to have to buy access to get to those folks. And that's going to be a billion dollars. That's right. He just needs to, he's going to be politically and culturally and, and just emblematically destroyed. He's all in. He better start spending his own money big time. Larry Nichols, in closing, this is the reason I got you back on today, really, is you were getting into the polling. A lot of their internal polling, I know the Trump campaign, he's actually ahead three, four, five points, some seven or eight or higher. And, and that's in battleground states. He's dead heat in, in, in a lot of states, whether where she supposedly is on top. But they come out and say, she, you know, six, the, the Clinton News Network said she was six points ahead on Friday in a poll. And we know how they manipulate those. You got cut off when you said what that signified. Well, right now, when you see a poll, Alex, and they're showing Hillary 12 points ahead, don't believe it. It can't be that way. It's any poll that you see at this moment in time in the political race between Clinton and Trump, it'll be 40 plus or minus one or two points. For Hillary, 40 plus or minus one or two points for Trump. But the reason, Alex, they're fluffing up Hillary's numbers in these bogus polls, again, is to try to get the RNC to say, hey, he hasn't got a chance. He can't possibly beat her and kick him out in that six-day meeting. That's what they're up to. This is all about eliminating Trump. Look, I don't know whether Trump would be a great president, a good president, a bad president. I don't know. But he certainly is outside of the system, and they don't want him. Absolutely. He hadn't played ball, and he's shown he's an anti-globalist. And I've been told right. by a lot of longtime patriots that are high level uh, that, no, he's actually a closet info warrior, uh, not just Jerome yeah. Corsi, but so many others. And that's why they are scared to death. This, this signifies that uh, nationalism is rising and it's beautiful. Folks can uh, find uh, Larry at Nichols Live at AOL.com and can also support him there on the PayPal as he battles cancer. I didn't ask for that, but it's important to do. Nichols Live at AOL.com. Thank you so much, Larry Nichols. We'll talk to you again soon, my friend. Sounds great. Thanks, Alex. You bet. Okay, we're going to go to break. We're going to come back. And we are going to hand the baton. I have a few more comments to make, though, uh, with uh, the man, David Knight. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. Infowars.com. It's July 3rd. Now, talk about synchronicity, serendipity, coincidence, whatever. I was going to break. I was intending to come back and talk about this very subject. And Larry Nichols was still in my ear. They, they hadn't disconnected him, our guest. And he said, hey, Alex, I want to come on next week or soon separately to talk about what a major insurance company told me separately i actually do business with this insurance company and he said uh, and what other insiders are telling me about crashing the economy and how people need to get prepared talk about the zeitgeist i was just about to come back and say that we've got a special that runs through um fourth of july and i guess until tuesday one of the biggest food specials ever 20 to 40 percent off Infowars select which is just my patriot supply food private label by us who are able to sell it for even lower and their prices are great we sell both theirs in our private labeled at infowarsstore.com we have 
a whole bunch of other big specials on other survival goods that are the highest quality at the lowest prices you're going to find at InfoWarsStore.com. You can also call toll-free 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you have any questions or want to order over the phone, 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. But regardless, they want to make us independent on them. We fund ourselves here selling Hillary for President shirts and books and films and things you need. Uh, X2 Survival Shield, 20% off. Water filters, 20% off. And InfoWarsStore.com. And, and, and we couldn't do what we're doing without you, so thank you. Uh, but Larry, I was about to come back and talk about this, and you were wanting to bring it up completely separately. Government is all over the news, stockpiling records of food, weapons, gearing up for collapse. Uh, you know, the FEMA's doing it. I mean, it really is going on. I hope none of this happens. I hope, I'm not predicting it's going to happen. They are. FEMA says they believe a 395% food increase in the next decade and worldwide meltdown because they're doing it by design. So in the next three minutes or so, Larry, uh, talk about what, I don't know if you want to say the name of the insurance company, but the, the intel you're getting. Well, Alex, you know, I've tried to be, I've tried to be as informative as I can, but some of the information I get, obviously, I'm, I'm in a very tough situation as to what I can or can't say. But I am begging, I am begging your audience, folks, if you've ever believed a thing I have ever said, ever, hear me here. And I get nothing. Not tell them, Alex, I don't get anything from I don't, I don't know. I get no money from Alex for this. This is nothing. It's for you, folks. You have got. It's coming. It's coming soon, sooner than you even think. It's coming. And when it, it the, you have got to stock up and be able to survive for anywhere from two to six months. Now, I warn everybody, think about the times when you've gotten a report that a snowstorm's coming and you run to the grocery store and the shelves are already bare. Folks, when this economy, remember there are five major banks, one of them is technically defunct right now. And when that gets known, everything is going to collapse right on top of you. So, do so it's going to be Lehman Brothers, Lehman Brothers Part 2 is what you've been told? You bet. Worse. Worse than Lehman Brothers because this is... There's not any way to catch it. There's no way to save it this time. There's no too big to fail. What we're talking about with the financial companies, the five major banks, we're talking about such a significant debt and significant loss that they cannot withstand it and they can't hide it anymore. So I would suggest everybody, if Alex has got it, use it. Get food. Get food that you can put up and have ready. Get water purification. You're going to have to have it. And then, folks, get the get iodine, get medicines that you've got to have to be able to exist because you're going to be on your own. Alex, we're fixing to be, if we're not careful, and I don't even see how it can stop now, we're going to be in a mode where we basically are just damn near primal. And well, so well, that's what the establishment ready. says. I mean, here's an example. Usually doctors, my kids are at them, you know, try to go, oh, here's antibiotics, you know, even if it's not needed. And now I just keep them. I used to, like, not get the prescription or throw it away if they didn't need it. And now I've been doing that myself. I mean, I've gotten storable food here at the office. I have gotten more solar panels at my house. I mean, because I can instinctively see it. And I hope somehow we dodge a bullet. But we've gone from this being a possibility to a probability to a near certainty, and and I just wish that folks knew how, and of course, obviously, we're fighting our operation, selling things we think people need, uh, but I just want to beat the globalists. I mean, we take right now all the profits from the Hillary for President shirts, and I'm putting them into airplanes to fly over the RNC and DNC with giant banners saying Hillary for President. I mean, I'm all in, uh, and, you know, there are a lot of crazy people out there that say, well, talk radio is going to do better, you know, if, uh, if, if uh, Hillary gets in because everybody will be listening. Listen, I'd rather go out of business and have Donald Trump in there and I'll have a chance and be on air. I'm not here, crisis manager, you know, trying to, I want stuff to be better. And, and, right. and, and, and the public's mindset, some of them that think all twisted, it just shows how screwed up things are. And Alex, one thing that I hope you're prepared for, 
they're going to shut the internet down. This day's coming. You know, it's kind of like with terrorism, the next big terrorist attack, even the, even Obama's. Chief They've got an internet terrorist. kill switch. They admit it all. And look, nobody thought they'd do Obamacare. Nobody thought right. they'd stop calling Islamic terror. They won't. Right. I mean, they, they give orders now. Larry Nichols, God bless you. Nichols live at LL.com is your email. God bless you. And we'll, we'll talk to you again soon, my friend. Thanks, buddy. See you. Thank you. I'm going to punch out right now. And because David Knight came in on this Sunday. This is Larry and I taping this on Friday, but it's a live show coming up uh, with David Knight. Uh, and and I, I was just going to tape the whole show, and David Knight said, no, I want to come in on Sunday. Uh, he cares so much and is so upset about what's happening and realizes nobody else is live on the weekend. And uh, so it's always great to co-host with him here on Sunday. Sometimes it's taped, sometimes it's live. It's almost it's, it's live most of the time, but we tape some shows too. Uh, but uh, I, quite frankly, I've gotten to the point where I feel guilty that I haven't gotten more prepared myself. I mean, this is, I, look, let me, I'm on my knees every night just praying for providence and people to wake up because if you study history and you look at what the elites are saying and you look at the things that are going on in this world, it goes from crazy to insane to just, like he said, just basically barbarism. Um, Seven million people starved to death in the Great Depression and we were 90% rural, most of them self-sufficient. Those numbers are exactly flipped today. And you look at the the zombie-like population, God, I'm one of them. Compared to my grandfather's, or I mean, especially my dad's dad, he could do anything. And I'm just really concerned. And I'm just here trying to be a Paul Revere, getting you to get ready, warning people politically to try to change things and hopefully avert this. But at the same time, shifting to defense, getting ready for ourselves. And I've always been 10% get defense, 90% offense. I'm kind of 70% offense, 30% defense now. And as things get worse and worse, I go more and more defense because there comes a point where I just got to take care of my family. <laughs> and I've got to have these open, real discussions with you out there. David and I can speak about it. You know, he's all in. He moved down here from South Carolina with his family and sold everything he had to fight the New World Order. He's all in. So we'll be back on the other side of this break. I'm Alex Jones. Have a great 4th of July. We're 240 years old this year. I just hope we have another another few years coming up and hopefully turn the tide against this globalist takeover. David Knight coming up after the break. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Sunday, July 3rd, 2016. As we look at the state of our country, it is absolutely amazing to see the corruption that has been exhibited this last week and the calculated manipulation. I wanted to come in today and talk, even though I know this is a slow news time. This is why this all happened this week, by the way, folks. You understand, they like to break the damaging news on weekends. They'll break it on Fridays, they'll break it on Saturdays, because they know people aren't going to be watching the news like they will at the beginning of the week. We understand that, too. Everybody that sends news, and certainly the politicians, understand this. This has been building up this entire week. And, you know, it's, it's like the big lie. You know, if you're going to tell a lie, go big. Go big. Uh, because it's going to be easier for you to sell the big lie than it is a small lie. That's what the, uh, the politicians understand. That's what the Clintons have understood. And, you know, when you go for the corruption, you got to go big. you got to go so big people won't even believe it. Okay? That's what they do. And so we've seen this whole thing unfolding this entire week. It began on Monday when uh, we had the private meeting between Loretta Lynch and Bill Clinton uh, at the airport tarmac. They were told was just a coincidental tete-a-tete. Uh, -tete, okay? Then... On uh, Wednesday, we find out the Department of Justice, which is controlled by Loretta Lynch, two days later, we find out that they're going to recommend that the State Department be given 27 months to produce these documents. The irony is, is that they need more time because there's so many documents that are involved in this security issue, okay? So then we find out that there's going to be a deposition on Saturday. Who knew? Oh, well, Loretta Lynch knew, the FBI knew, I'm sure the Clintons knew. And that's the issue there, folks. We're told that this is bad optics. We see the headlines here. Daily Mail says, well, you know, quote, unquote, hindsight is twenty twenty. Hillary says, you know, Bill is just kind of this bumbling idiot. You know, he's a guy. You know, you just, men are just such idiots, especially Bill. You know, he's just, he's just an idiot. You need me. You need a woman here. But it's just this bumbling Bill. Uh, hindsight is, is twenty twenty. It was regrettable, but it was a short chance meeting. Okay, this is all that we're hearing. We're hearing they just talked about their close, long-term friendship. I don't understand why nobody is calling her on that. 
Why hasn't she recused herself simply because they are close, long-term friends? If you're a prosecutor, if you're a judge, and you have a long-term personal and career relationship with somebody, he gave her her first big job in the federal government. Bill Clinton did. They are long-time personal friends. Why isn't that, in and of itself, a reason to recuse yourself from this situation? Everybody knows she's in his, on his team. Why is this not an issue for anybody? I don't even hear anybody talking about that. They started talking about, well, she needs to recuse herself when they got so blatantly in your face about it. I mean, people have given them a pass about the fact that they have known each other for decades, that he's been her mentor, she's been his minion, and she won't recuse herself. That's not a problem. They say, well, okay, well, if that's not a problem, I guess we can just meet privately on a plane for a half hour and discuss tactics. Why was that important this week? And you understand, too, of course, we know, and we had the article, we had uh, Larry Nichols, we were telling you every way we could, this is a sign, <laughs> everything's happening this week. If you didn't already know, if you didn't already know this lady was a minion of the Clintons, that this was a political conflict of interest, it was a patronage conflict of interest, it was an employment conflict of interest long before this meeting ever occurred. This meeting occurred because of all these things. And if you didn't understand the fix was in, then just consider the fact that all these three things happened. The meeting on Monday, the announcement that they're not going to release any of these documents until the middle of her first term, if she gets elected. Probably will at the rate things are going because, you know, these same corrupt people are going to be controlling the ballot boxes. And then we have the meeting on the Saturday. It's not just any Saturday. It couldn't have been a debtor news time unless they had done it on the Saturday before Christmas, the last shopping day before Christmas. And even then, it might not have escaped the radar. I don't know if anybody is out there listening to us today. I came in here because I wanted to cover this live, what was going to be said yesterday, and how it was going to be spun by the media. It's very important that you not let them use this same MO all the time. These people are career criminals. They planned this stuff, they timed this stuff, they timed it for 4th of July weekend. Not just any weekend, the 4th of July weekend to let all this stuff go there so they could spin it and it would be old news. They'd move on to something else before you ever paid attention. Are you paying attention? Let's look at what they had to say here. Look at how they spun this. And nobody spins it better for the Clintons now, this election cycle, than the Washington Post. They've always been lefties. They've always been biased and it's always been obvious but i have never seen anyone spin it more heavily than the washington post has been uh spinning it this year i mean th just the worst i've seen of all the liberal papers of the mainstream media washington post is absolutely the worst now say the fbi agents interviewed hillary clinton for three and a half hours Sunday, saturday morning and of course you had the great uh, i got a note here about if you haven't seen the drudge report <laughs> you see the picture of the headlines i've got the new york post where they've got hillary on a barbecue grill uh wearing her chairman mouse suit that she always wears okay i guess she's going to be our grand mouse uh, she becomes president, but they have her on the barbecue. <laughs> uh, but of course, she's not feeling the heat because she's got people like the Washington Post to douse the flames for her. Here's what they have to say. And that, well, this is they're quoting her and they just put this out there and then they put their own spin on top of it. But here's Hillary's campaign spokesman, how he spun it. He said she gave a voluntary interview. And she is pleased to have had the opportunity to assist the Department of Justice in bringing this review to a conclusion. So think about this. Keywords here. Voluntary. Assist. I'm helping them. Okay. I'm volunteering to help them. And we're finished. Okay. It's done. That's the way she's spinning this. Now, understand that they've been spinning this for a very long time. Remember back, uh, it's back in May. We had FBI Director James Comey. She kept telling everybody, this is not an investigation. It's merely a security review. It's merely a security inquiry. And so they talked to uh, Director Comey, FBI Director James Comey. Fox News talked to him about that back in May. And they said, um, what about this security inquiry? What does that mean? And he goes, uh, well, we're the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We're conducting an investigation that's what we do. We don't do security inquiries. I don't know what that's about.
They use the language. They spin the language. They prevaricate around the bush using this language. So when she says it's a voluntary interview, and I was watching one of her surrogates on CNN spin this for her. And he said, look, if she was guilty, she wouldn't have even have talked to them. And it's like, oh, really? <laughs> uh, you know, if you tell the FBI in a big investigation, you're not going to talk. I've got nothing to say to you. You go in and you just keep taking the Fifth Amendment. That's going to make you look very guilty. So if you're guilty and if you're smart, yeah, you will do this, even though there's a danger in it. And Hillary Clinton pointed out what was so dangerous about this. And I think it's important to take a look at this because I think it explains the cozy meeting that happened on Monday. When she was talking about the meeting, she said, you know, you have to be very careful with this. These meetings are very, very dangerous. She said, and of course it happened with General Petraeus. They, they weighed actually charging him for lying to the FBI because of his prevarications, trying to be evasive. They ultimately didn't do it. They gave him a hand slap. And of course, they're not even going to do that to Hillary Clinton. But she said, many times the FBI will do investigations and they might question someone on the actual issue before them and not bring any charges on that issue. But they may charge them for lying to the FBI, which in itself is a very, very serious crime. So this is very dangerous for me to go in and talk to them because, you know, she has a real problem telling the truth, doesn't she? <laughs> but she was coached, folks. You have to understand, Hillary Clinton, who has not had a press conference in, let's see, what has it been now? Maybe 215 days or so since she's had a press conference. I know it was a couple of weeks ago we talked about how she'd hit her 200th anniversary of not having a press conference where she actually had to field questions. She has prepared statements that she gives. This was a prepared statement. She had all week to prepare the statement because the attorney general who had seen everything met with her husband who is also under investigation and has a relationship with her that should have caused her to recuse it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this July 3rd, 2016. I hope you're having a wonderful 4th of July weekend. But I hope it hasn't lulled you to sleep like the former Navy SEAL was lulled to sleep by the Tesla self-driving car. See, that's the real danger. And I, I, I hope we have time to talk about that issue today. I wanted to talk about it Friday, but with everything that was happening with the, uh, with the Hillary investigation, with the emails, I didn't have a chance to talk about that. I think it's a perfect metaphor. Here's a guy who is a former Navy SEAL, one of the most alert people you're going to find on the planet, who's been involved in all kinds of dangerous activities. What killed him? He was killed by the siren song of technology, lulling him into passivity, lulling him to sleep, and crashing him not against the rocks, but against a semi-trailer. Okay, this is what's happening to us as a society. The tragic death of this Navy SEAL is a metaphor for our society. Are we going to be lulled into, lulled to our death by this siren song, the promises of security in exchange for our liberty, of prosperity in exchange for our liberty? We need to understand on this weekend as we celebrate our independence that's now coming up to 240 years. That's when we declared it. And it was a long fight to get it. The British declared their independence uh, last week. It's going to be a long fight for them to get their independence. And we can begin on no in first week of uh, November when we have our election to try to get it again, try to get it back. But you know what? It's eternal vigilance is the real price that we pay for this. And the minute you are lulled to sleep by these lies, by these promises, that is when liberty dies. That's when you will die, folks. So we have to stay awake. And that's why I'm so concerned how... The population is being played by this criminal gang, the Clintons. This last week, the sequence of events, the fact they planned all this for the 4th of July weekend, and it's the Department of Justice. Look, the FBI is part of the Department of Justice. If you think, really, that everything is okay, because as The Hill says, the FBI director is now taking center stage in the Clinton email case, what a load of baloney, okay? They say he's now firmly in the driver's seat. Yeah, you know, like the like the Navy SEAL was firmly in the driver's seat. Okay, not not controlling it though. They say Comey has repeatedly clashed with the White House since he took office nearly three years ago. This is the Hill on issues ranging from the use of encryption technologies to the ability to vet Syrian refugees coming to the U.S. to the existence of the so-called Ferguson effect on policing efforts. Okay, 
And then there's the famous 2004 episode, which underscores what people hope is his cre uh, credibility. We'll see. We'll see. His credibility is going to be defined not by what he did in 2004, but what James Comey does in 2016. As Donald Trump tweeted out, it's impossible for the FBI to not recommend criminal charges against Hillary Clinton. What she did was wrong. We all know that it was wrong. Anybody who is paying attention to this knows that it is wrong, unless they are firmly entrenched in a cult-like trance about the Clintons. Only the most die-hard Clintonites can't see what's wrong here. I even heard people totally in the tank for Hillary at the end of the week saying, you know, this thing at the airport with Bill Clinton, that, that's really bad. I'm really uncomfortable with that. That had a lot of visuals. It's hard to visualize what's going on with the emails and that sort of thing. But boy, when you just have that visual right there to describe that. People can picture that in their minds, what's going on with that. But, you know, he, back in 2004, he rushed to the Washington Hospital to block George W. Bush's White House from renewing a warrantless wiretapping program, while then Attorney General John Ashcroft lay ill in the hospital. Now, great, okay? He's had fights about encryption technology and so forth and so on. But to understand, this is also the guy who wants a backdoor key into all the devices that we have. He wants a key to everything. Now, that's not only a bad idea for investigators, it's not only a bad idea for us, it's not only a violation of the Constitution, but it also doesn't give me warm fuzzies when I think about FBI Director James Comey. Also, he was right when it came to the watch lists. Understand, watch lists could be an effective tool to investigate terrorism. Could be. But they want to use it as a penalty. It's already being used as a penalty with a no-fly zone. They want to use it as another penalty for gun control. You cannot do pre-crime penalties and still have a country and a rule of law. You cannot take away people's right to a speedy trial, to be publicly accused, to confront the witnesses against them, to even know what the charges are against them. That's what happens with a watch list. Now, if you want to put somebody on a list and say, we're investigating this person or whatever, but you cannot apply penalties to somebody that has not gone through that process of being charged, indicted, and then found guilty, then you apply the, the uh, penalties. They want to skip all of that stuff. They've already done it with the no-fly list. They've applied penalties for people not allowing them to travel. Now they want to apply it for gun control. Now, James Comey said, just from a pragmatic standpoint, he didn't have a problem with it necessarily from the fact that this was a pre-crime punishment. What he said was, wait, we're investigating these people. They're going to know that they're being investigated if we block them from buying guns. To which Loretta, uh, Loretta Lynch said, uh, I don't care about investigating terrorists. I want gun control. That's essentially what she said. She said, nah, I don't care. We're going to shut that down. So this is a guy who works for Loretta Lynch. She is above him. So I don't really buy the fact that when she refuses to take herself out of the case, that she's not going to be shutting this down. And we'll talk about how that's going to happen, the different mechanisms, and why Hillary won't be indicted. I'll give you some point-by-point uh, -point examples of how this is going to break down. But before we do, real quickly, I want to let you know that we have a 4th of July mega special, several of them, it's four of them, as a matter of fact, big specials. We really appreciate your support. We can't do this without you. And on this weekend, when we celebrate liberty, we wanted to give you some... Key specials, 20% off of Survival Shield X2, that's our nascent iodine, 20 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Food, and 20% off both Alexa Pure water filters and Alexa Pure air filters. All the water filters, all the air filters from Alexa Pure, 20% off, 20% off Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine, and 20 to 40% off Select Storable Food. We want to help you prepare for your independence to make sure that you have what you need in case things get bad, and it also funds our operation. And we really appreciate your support, especially as we look to the coming Republican and Democrat conventions, which is going to be a very expensive thing for us as a independent news organization to fund, but we're going to be there. We're going to have a large crew at both events, and it's going to be a very significant year here covering what's happening. Why is she not going to be indicted? Well, let's talk about this, okay? There's peer pressure, career pressure, if you will, okay? These people, uh, clearly Loretta, uh, Loretta Lynch doesn't want this. We understand that. She's a close friend of the Clintons. Her career minions are going to know this as well. They're also going to know that they may be very well working for Hillary in a year. So they're not going to have a lot of incentive to do anything about that.
We also see that she is still leaving herself in control. She refuses to recuse herself from it, okay? Now, as I just pointed out, she didn't have any trouble shutting down FBI Director Comey when it came to the watch list stuff. And she said it's very important for her to remain in the loop as a supervisor, again, to be able to put pressure on. And here's the key thing, to remain as a mole inside this investigation for the Clintons, to let them know what's happening, to give them intel on what the FBI knows, what the FBI is about to do in their criminal investigation. All of that information will continue to go to Loretta Lynch. That's why it was critical for her to meet with Bill so that Hillary could be briefed and be prepared so she didn't commit perjury when she had her questioning, her voluntary questioning, of course as she likes to spin it, and as the Washington Post likes to spin it. They, they say here, uh, they say this was the meeting on Monday. This is the way the Washington Post calls it, an impromptu meeting. It just happened, you know, just happened. It was impromptu. And then they say, Lynch did not formally recuse herself, saying that she, that would mean that I wouldn't even be briefed on what the findings were. So she seemed to promise, now this is the Washington Post, understand. She seemed to promise she would not veto whatever decision came from federal prosecutors. She seemed to do it, okay? She won't publicly do it. She will covertly move against it, as I said, with pressure, and she will be a source of information. But again, if she is that closely connected to the Clintons that she just can't say no and they got to meet for a half hour, why wouldn't that be a basis for her to recuse herself before she gets caught in this dirty deed? We had the New York Times when George Bush was around saying, Attorney General Alberto Galanza says impeachable, you know, and they give the basis for it. They say, well, it's not just for high crimes and misdemeanors, but it's for conduct, quote, grossly incompatible with the office held, subversive of that office and of our constitutional system of government. Loretta Lynch should be impeached. We all know they're criminals. When are we going to do something about it? When are the people in Washington going to do something about it? Where can we find an honest man in D.C.? Maybe we can't. Stay with us. We'll be right back. There's more news about a massive shooting in Baghdad. 126 killed, including 25 children. We'll have details on that the other side of the hour. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're going to get back to the impeachment of Loretta Lynch. And uh, I think that's a very important... We we've somehow have to get our integrity back with government. We have to start somewhere. And I understand they tried to do it with Eric Holder. And we're going to talk about that in the next segment, uh, how that went down. You know, it was sold to us that uh, Loretta, Loretta Lynch was going to become uh, the uh, person who was going to restore trust in the Department of Justice. And how's that worked out for us? Uh, not too well. We're going to review what the problems were with Eric Holder, what Republicans tried to do with that. But first, I want to cover some breaking news here. Uh, there is another shooting, um, 126 killed with a shooting bombing, including 25 children in a new attack in Baghdad. Of course, we had just a couple of days ago an attack in Bangladesh. Now we've got another one in Baghdad, 126 killed. Uh, they're claiming uh, responsibility for this with ISIS. They say it was a suicide car bomb that killed 125 people. And the 25, 20, uh, yeah, 120, well, it says uh, 126 in the headline, 125 in the, uh, the body. It will go up, I'm sure. Uh, families had gathered in the popular area to break the Ramadan fast and to watch the Euro 2016 soccer tournament in a cafe when a suicide car bomb exploded, ripping through the multi-level building that also houses stores and a gym. At least 147 people were injured. So, happy Ramadan, the religion of peace. How about a fast with the uh, on mass murders? Can we do that? You know, really... <laughs> There's a lot of different sects in Islam, of course, okay? We got the Sunnis, we got the Shias, we got the Wahhabists who are closely aligned with the CIA. The Wahhabists are the ones that are in control of Saudi Arabia, responsible for so many brutal beheadings and mutilations as part of their Sharia law. But then, of course, there's also another denomination. You know, just as we have Christian denominations, we've got all these different flavors of uh, Baptists. There's probably about 25 different denominations of Baptists. We've got uh, different denominations of uh, Islamic terrorists, especially those who are affiliated with the CIA. You know, that just like you've got uh, the Baptist subsect of uh, Christianity, you've got the CIA subsect of Islam. You've got the Wahhabist, and then you've also got that famous sect called ISIS that we help to create, that we arm that we cover for, that we don't attack. 
and they're the ones who are claiming responsibility for this. And now this is going to be sold to us as the need to further give up our liberty so that they can protect us. This is going to be used to push the war on terror to another degree. I'm very, uh, very sad for the people that were killed there, but uh, we know how this is going to break out. Just like the Clintons have their M.O. of big lies, big corruption, and breaking it on holiday weekends. <laughs> uh, they also, the CIA has their M.O. because it works, you know. Fool me once, shame on you, but you know, you fooled me a second, a third, a fourth time ad infinitum, shame on me. And we just keep seeing the same methods used over and over again by these people. It's absolutely unbelievable. And here's another uh, bit of Clinton corruption, okay? This is not even the email scandal. Yet another scandal is coming out. Fox News reports on this. Clinton sought secret information on EU bailout plans as her son-in-law's doomed hedge fund gambled on Greece. And, of course, she has a son-in-law, uh, Chelsea's husband, who has just tanked his hedge funds. And it also has connections with the Clintons. And the amazing thing about this, when you look at how all this information went through, is that he just didn't ask his mother-in-law for advice. Hillary Clinton is one of the most effective investors ever on this planet. I mean, remember the cattle futures that she bought? First time ever she got in the commodity futures, cattle futures market, first time ever. She had this massive home run and she never did it again. <laughs> never did it again. Isn't that interesting? It always helps when you've got inside help on this stuff. And in this particular case, her son-in-law bet big on the Greek economic recovery. In 2012, he created a $325 million basket of offshore funds. And he did it with special help, a special arrangement from guess who? Goldman Sachs. Who'd have thought? Hillary Clinton, Goldman Sachs, her son-in-law, the EU, the Greek bailout, it's all there, folks. Yet another Clinton scandal. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. And, of course, we're talking about what's happened this last week, especially on the Saturday of the 4th of July weekend when Hillary had her big interview at the FBI. Are they going to hire her as Grand Mao? I guess uh, they're all on board at the Department of Justice. We've got uh, pays to have friends in high places, and she certainly does. And today we've got another, yet another Clinton scandal that's just broken. Uh, we've got Fox News uh, reporting hedge fund manager, who is uh, Hillary Clinton's son-in-law, put together a very large fund in 2012, $325 million basket of offshore funds with the help of Goldman Sachs, the funds have lost tens of millions of dollars, predicting that the bailouts of the Greek banking system would pump up the value of the country's bonds. One fund, dedicated exclusively to the Greek debt, suffered near total losses. In other words, any, any, uh, for every hundred dollars you put in there, you get nothing. <laughs> uh, everything is gone. Now, this is her son-in-law, husband of Chelsea Clinton. Now, this all happened as she was Secretary of State. Now, here's the issue. It's not just that uh, he made some bad decisions. You know, he, he first bad decision was he should have had Hillary manage the fund. As I mentioned in the last segment, she is a whiz at doing investment. I mean, just look at that. The only time she ever got involved in futures markets, buying cattle futures, she made a fortune. And she never did it again. I guess she just quit while she's ahead, huh? Well... In this particular case, she was Secretary of State in 2012. She didn't step down until 2013. But newly released emails. Here we go. Here's these emails. You want to know why she had a private server? You want to know why she, she subordinated the interests of the national security state, this religion on which we have to sacrifice all of our individual liberties and the Constitution? We make them as burnt offerings to the security state. But, of course, for her, she doesn't care. She puts all this stuff on a private server. The One of the people who is probably uh, a person of interest to everyone on Earth, all the uh, foreign actors, terrorists, foreign governments, allies, everyone's going to be looking at the Secretary of State's information, okay? Just like they hack into the Federal Reserve. They've hacked into the Federal Reserve now at least 50 times by the Federal Reserve's own admission. Why? Because they want to look at the meetings, uh, the minutes of the meetings as to whether or not they're going to raise interest rates or not. If you have that kind of inside information, you can make a fortune. 
And you know what? If you're the Secretary of State and you've got some inside information about what's going to be happening in the European Union and with the banks and with Goldman Sachs, you would think you could make a fortune there as well. Except <laughs> sometimes you're so stupid you can't even make money when you got a license to steal, okay? And that's what happened here. Say so newly released emails from 2012 show that Hillary and the Clinton Foundation consultant Sidney Blumenthal, it's always the usual suspects, isn't it? Shared classified information, classified information about how German leadership viewed the prospects for a Greek bailout. Clinton also shared protected State Department information about Greek bonds with her husband at the same time that her son-in-law aimed his hedge fund at Greece. Now, the only reason they lost money is because they're trading on classified information about what the German leadership thinks about what's going on in Greece. And the German leadership is clueless, <laughs> as we just saw with Brexit. Okay, as we just saw, as we've been seeing with what they're doing with the uh, with the um, uh, the euro and and their currency and the interest markets there, they don't know what they're doing. So you can get classified information, you can violate the law, and you can share this as insider trading, and you still are passing around junk information, and that's what happened in this particular case. It's still illegal. It's still illegal to share classified information with your son-in-law, so he can make a lot of money on his special Goldman Sachs backed. Uh, hedge fund, okay? This is the Clintons. This is what they do. We were told that Loretta Lynch was going to be the antidote to Eric Holder. We were told that uh, she was going to set things right. You know, Eric Holder was this left-wing activist. He had uh, done everything that Obama wanted to do from a political agenda standpoint. When he refused to cooperate with Congress on Fast and Furious, they had a bipartisan vote in the House... They held him in criminal contempt. Now, this is our highest ranking law enforcement officer, the attorney general. The attorney general is over the FBI, over all these different law enforcement agencies. And he was held in criminal contempt, but they did not remove him. Okay, It's the first time in history that a sitting cabinet member has ever faced that kind of censure. And he continued to set, and he left at his leisure. And he allowed people like uh, entities like HSBC to continue laundering money for drug cartels and terrorists. They allowed these large banks to rig the LIBOR market, to rig the currency markets, the other commodity markets, stocks and bond markets. They're too big to fail, too big to jail. And he allowed all that to go on. And so they held him in criminal contempt. And eventually, when he got good and ready, he went back to the office on Wall Street that had been held in reserve for him left just the way he left it. Kept that, kept that office for him so he could get back to the big bank. Okay? And then Loretta Lynch comes in. She's going to be the person who is going to restore trust, except she's a Clinton operative. She's part of the Clinton mob. And it was interesting, as I point out, in the New York Times, back in 2007, when the shoe was on the left foot, okay, uh, or I guess we could say it was on the right foot, and these were the lefties who were complaining they didn't have a shoe. Okay, The New York Times is saying, well, you know, Alberto Gonzalez, the attorney general, he's impeachable, you know. I think we need to update that. We need to say she's impeachable. Loretta Lynch is impeachable. They said back in 2007, they said, if Alberto Gonzalez will not resign, and I will say if she will not resign, if she will not recuse herself, if she refuses to recuse herself, she should resign as attorney general, really. They say Congress should impeach him. And they talk about how that is uh, accomplished under the Constitution. And they say it's a bad odor in these post-Clinton days, but they say it's not just high crimes and misdemeanors. It's conduct that is grossly incompatible with the office held and subversive of that office and of our constitutional system of government. Is that not the case with what Loretta Lynch is doing? Okay, she should have recused herself. Here's a woman who has worked for Bill Clinton. She has a close personal relationship with him. That's why she said they met for a half hour. She not only has worked for him, been an employee, had a personal relationship with him, owes her career to him. She also has a political relationship with him. In every respect, she is a minion. She is not, she has a conflict of interest in investigating them. She should not be sitting there as, in this case, a judge deciding whether or not they're going to move forward with the prosecution. At this point, she is sitting there as a judge. She should be removed from office if she will not remove herself 
from this case. It is absolute corruption. And I want to read another excerpt from this article going back to 2007 from the New York Times. From the New York Times. And the shoe is on the other foot. They said, well, throughout Mr. Gonzalez's testimony, uh, he claims that he's had no mem memory of the November Justice Department meetings at which he authorized the attorney firings uh, that left even Republican stalwarts like Jeff Sessions of Alabama gaping in incredulity. Okay, Jeff Sessions. Even Jeff Sessions. Well, you know what? Jeff Sessions is one of the few honest people in Washington. I remember looking at him talking to Leon Panetta, the guy who had been a congressman, who had been chosen uh, to uh, be a, uh, the um, CIA director, uh, was also the Secretary of Defense. And as he was Secretary of Defense at the time, before he became CIA director, I remember Jeff Sessions, Senator Sessions, asking him under what circumstances would you commit troops, knowing that we don't do declarations of war under the Constitution anymore, but just wanted to get it on the record. And Leon Panetta kept saying, well, we would talk to NATO, we would talk to the UN, we would talk to international allies. And he goes, but you're going to talk to Congress, right? And he goes, well, we, we would advise Congress as to what we've decided. And he goes, I can't believe you're saying this. You're a, you used to be a congressman. You know what the Constitution says. And we had the same situation. Here you had a Republican attorney general who was lying to Congress, okay? And who called him on it? Jeff Sessions. He's not a political hack of the left and right. This is one of the few people in Washington with integrity. I certainly hope that he is, he's been the advisor for uh, Donald Trump since last August on trade issues. I certainly hope that Donald Trump has the wisdom to get somebody with that kind of integrity as his vice president. The person who would call criminals from both the Republican and the Democrat Party. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host. You know, we've been told by the Keynesian economists that the Great Depression was caused by trade tariffs. And that simply is a lie. We had Ben Bernanke tell us, hey, the Federal Reserve caused the Great Depression. Sorry, we won't do it again. We know that it wasn't simply trade taxes. We'd had trade taxes in this country for a very long time. I want to play for you what uh, Donald Trump said about the Founding Fathers, what they knew about trade, how they wanted, what free trade meant to them was free trade inside our country. And of course, fair trade with other countries as well. We don't want to isolate ourselves, but we need to have free trade in the United States. But they used to fund the entire government when it was the size of the Constitution. They could fund it completely off of some trade tariffs. I'm going to go to that speech in just a moment. Before I do, we have a 4th of July mega special, several of them available now at InfoWarsStore.com. We have 20 to 40 percent off InfoWars Select Storable Food. 20% off Alexa Pure water filters and 20% off of the air filters as well, the Alexa Pure air filters. And again, those are the water filters from the largest systems all the way down to the shower head filters that will get the chlorine out of your municipal water supply, as well as 20% off Survival Shield X2. Massive sales for this 4th of July weekend, mega specials, 20% off Survival Shield X2, off of Alexa Pure water filters, air filters, and 20 to 40% off select storable foods at InfoWars store.com. Let's go to this uh, clip from Donald Trump when he was speaking in Pennsylvania earlier about the founding fathers. Our founding fathers understood trade much better than our current politicians, believe me. George Washington said, that the promotion of domestic manufacturing will be among the first consequences to flow from an energetic government. Alexander Hamilton spoke frequently of the expediency of encouraging manufacturing in, in, in the United States. And listen to this. The first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, warned that, quote, the abandonment of the protective policy by the American government will produce want and ruin among our people. He understood it much better than our current politicians. That's why he was Abraham Lincoln, I guess.
Our original Constitution did not even have an income tax. Instead, it had tariffs, emphasizing taxation of foreign, not domestic, production. Yet today, 240 years after the revolution, we've turned things completely upside down. We tax and regulate and restrict our companies to death. And then we allow foreign countries that cheat to export their goods to us tax-free. How stupid is this? How could it happen? How stupid is this? As a result, we have become more dependent on foreign countries than ever before. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to declare our economic independence once again. That means... That means voting for Donald Trump. I'll do it. No doubt about it. Not even a little doubt. It also means reversing two of the worst legacies of the Clinton years. America has lost nearly one-third of its manufacturing jobs since 1997. Even as the country has increased its population, think of this, by 50 million people. At the center of this catastrophe are two trade deals pushed by Bill and Hillary Clinton. First, the North American Free Trade Agreement, or the disaster called NAFTA. Second, China's entry into the World Trade Organization. NAFTA was the worst trade deal in the history. It's like the history of this country. And Hillary Clinton, who backed that terrible, terrible agreement. Then, as Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton stood by idly while China cheated on its currency, added another trillion dollars to our trade deficits, and stole hundreds of billions of dollars in our intellectual property. And I've been talking about China for many years. And you know what? Nobody listened. But they're listening now. That I can tell you. All right. Now, these are remarks that were made by Donald Trump earlier this, uh, this last week in uh, Pennsylvania. And he's absolutely right when he talks about the loss of manufacturing being the loss of our economy. Understand what's happened with this. We've been told, and I've heard this repeated by people like Gary Johnson doubling down, saying, oh, it's a good thing when you get rid of manufacturing. This is what we were all told 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Donald Trump didn't buy it then. You had Ross Perot didn't buy it then either about NAFTA. They were fighting this battle for a long time. Donald Trump has one of the best advisors now for American sovereignty, and that is uh, Senator Sessions on his team. But look, what it, what's happened to us? We've had a manufacturing economy which used to produce wealth. That has been moved offshore. And we're told, don't worry about it. They're making cheap stuff for you. Just enjoy the cheap stuff that's coming in. And enjoy your nice, clean service jobs. How's that service economy working out for you? Well, see, even the service economy is disappearing, isn't it? It's going down into a gig economy, you know, like working for Uber. And Gary Johnson, when he's, we got a report up today on Infowars.com where he says, Trump is a racist. No, that's, that's uh, original, isn't it? I guess that'll really get you a lot of traction, won't it, uh, Gary? You know, Gary Johnson is nothing but a stalking horse for Hillary Clinton. And the Libertarian Party, I'm ashamed to say that I haven't had anything to do with it. It was decades ago that I was involved in it. But they, now they have become basically... Uh, a bunch of welfare whores just trying to get money out of the federal government. They hope that if they get more than 5%, they can get massive funds for their little political party uh, and get on the welfare bandwagon for their political party. That's what the Libertarian Party has turned into. And that's what they want to turn America into. Because you go from manufacturing to a service economy to the gig economy like Uber. Gary Johnson said, oh, Uber's great. We need to have Uber everything. Oh, really? Really? Because what happens when you get into this part-time service economy now that we're struggling with? The next thing that happens is people like Uber say, you're going away. We're going to replace you with robots, with automation, and you've got no job. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give you a handout, a universal basic income. And we've now got people like Charles Murray.
who documented back in the 1980s the problems of dependency based on welfare, now advocating it with the Koch brothers, with all of these libertarian think tanks saying, this is the way we control the precariat, the people whose jobs we have gradually eviscerated in this economy. We make them completely dependent with a universal basic income. Stop it. Take your independence. Don't become dependent. Stay with us. Be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host on this July 3rd, 2016. How do you, do you feel like you're uh, free and independent? Look at this law in California. This is on Friday, this last Friday, a new vaccine mandate taking effect in California. You are not going to be allowed, your child will not be allowed to enter the seventh grade or to advance in school unless you have taken all the shots mandated by the state. There you go. These are the same people who say it really doesn't matter. Uh, we don't want any kind of regulation or safety concerns whatsoever about abortions. I mean, here in Texas, they're even going to shut down the fire safety rules. The Supreme Court just struck everything. Remember, we talked about that. All of these laws, all these things that they had there, they had a lot of different safety requirements. They said, well, this is about women's health. All right, let's make sure that you're able to get a gurney into uh, these houses because a lot of these so-called abortion clinics were nothing but repurposed old houses that they had gone in to do abortions. So let's make sure that you got uh, fire safety in here, that you can get a gurney through the hallway, so forth and so on. They struck down everything, struck down everything, all of it uh, across the board, even though all of these regulations were severable. They're not concerned about that. They only have one concern. They want abortions. They don't care about your health either when it comes to the vaccines. These are people who would hand you a loaded revolver and say, don't worry, there's only uh, one cartridge in there. And, you know, that's only about 17% chance that you'll get shot. Just spin the, uh, spin the cylinder and hold it to your kid's head. And uh, if you don't, they're not going to go through school. And so we got a lot of people, they say, are going to move out of the Golden State. Hey, move your child out of school. And you'll probably have to move out of California in order to do that uh, because they don't like homeschooling there either. They don't like any kind of freedom there. Isn't it interesting? You know, we're, we're told that uh, they're all pro-choice, pro-choice people. They don't give you any choices about your life, not about your child's health, not which vaccines you're going to take and how you're going to schedule those vaccines so that you don't take all of them in a massive lump at once. They could care less, could care less, not your choice. OK, it's not your body or your child's body when it comes to vaccines, only when it comes to killing your children, then it's. Your body alone. Don't tell me what to do with my body. Get your laws off my body when it comes to that. Another piece of news. And this is a, a good piece of news, quite frankly, I think. Uh, we got the Chicago Tribune wringing their hands. That's always a good sign. They say, Cinemark looks awful, seeking a $700,000 judgment uh, from the Aurora, Colorado shooting victims who sued them and lost. Oh, gee, is, is that a problem? You see, what they did was they sued them in a frivolous lawsuit. They tried to say that the movie theater was responsible for the shooting. They're not. Neither are the gun manufacturers. Now, Hillary Clinton and the Democrats want to hold gun manufacturers responsible, even though we have a Second Amendment, even though we have the principle in law that if you don't do anything wrong or negligent, you're not liable to be sued. And even though the Congress specifically passed a bill saying, and oh, by the way, this applies to gun manufacturers. If they're just manufacturing guns, you know, people can use guns to defend lives. And they're used more often to defend lives than they are to take lives. But don't worry about that. We're not going to do anything. Hillary says she's going to take the guns anyway. She's going to go after the gun manufacturers. She's going to sue them just like these people Who's, uh, who were the parents of those uh, who were killed in this theater shooting. They sued the movie theater. They lost. And now, according to Colorado law, the winning side in a civil lawsuit is allowed to recover its litigation costs. And they're trying to do that. And the Chicago Tribune says, well, they're going to get a backlash from that. People are going to boycott this theater chain. And it's like, no, if I can ever find another movie I want to go see, and they're making such trash, I, don't, I can't think of any that are coming up that I want to go see. But if I do, I will make a point of going to Cinemark because I don't think they should be made victims of this. But, of course, it all goes back to Hillary Clinton. She wants to make you guilty for things that you didn't do. The movie theater should be shut down. The gun owners should be shut down. People who didn't have anything to do 
with what happened in Orlando, according to the official story. She wants to shut them down as well, to hold them guilty. But she won't go to jail. And I want to remind you of this interview. We played uh, a discussion with Larry Nichols and Alex uh, at the beginning of the show. We have a, another video and an article that has uh, clips from that up on Infowars.com. Clinton Insider says Lynch will not induct Hillary. And indict Hillary. Yeah, she will be inducted. She'll be inducted into the Criminal Hall of Fame, uh, now known as the White House. But she will not be indicted. We all know that. And uh, he spelled this out. I want to play you just an excerpt of this. You need to watch this entire interview. We saw this coming. To go, we have a video clip. I just put the article up on screen for TV viewers in the last segment. Lynch said we're going to criminalize criticizing Islam. He tells the, the press, don't call it radical Islam. They don't even mention Islam now in all these terror attacks. He got a gun from Fast and Furious at the Paris shooting. That's, that's foreign mainstream news, not even in the press here. It was our whistleblowers told us they're shipping guns through Mexico to ISIS. These are organized criminals. And Larry Nichols is our guest, uh, the consummate Clinton insider. I've been blowing the whistle on him for two decades. Larry, what does it signify that on the tarmac, she meets him, they meet for 30 minutes at least, the, the FBI and Secret Service tell ABC News and others, turn your cameras off. They've testified to that now. This is clearly premeditated evil. It isn't an accident chance meeting. Why would they be so incredibly arrogant? I mean, is there a method to the madness rubbing our noses in it? Oh, absolutely. You know, Alex, I used to say right on your program years, years, years ago, if you'll recall, I used to say the good news is they're lying to us. When they stop lying, then we're gone. All right, they're not lying anymore. They're doing stuff right in front of us. And what she's doing, what this meeting signifies, and don't believe they didn't know it, because I'm telling you, Lynch and Clinton both knew the reality of them meeting. You know, they're not the professionals. They know. This is to get everybody discouraged. <laughs> this is to break the spirit of all of us that are out here trying to fight and get our country back. This is designed to break our spirit. Otherwise, well, I don't think it's done that. Meeting. I don't think it's done that. I think it's energized everybody. But, I mean, her going on the yeah. Aspen Institute, have you seen the clip? It just happened an hour ago. We yeah. played it. Where yeah. she says, I'm yeah. going to decide. She goes, recusing yeah. myself, no, but I'm not involved, but I decide whether we prosecute. Yeah. Clinton doublespeak. Listen, here's what they're doing. She's not going to be indicted. It's over. It's over. She's not going to be indicted. So that's she the decision. They're, so they're rubbing our noses in it, squatting in our face, letting us know. And if anyone, what that meeting was about for those career prosecutors. And again, you can hear the full report of that as well as uh, some quotes of that. You can see the article up at Infowars.com. We also talked on Friday to Wayne Madsen. We talked about another MO of the Clintons, as uh, Larry Nichols knows well. And that is the people who seem to die around them as part of these investigations. So is it, wasn't it an interesting week last week with the Clintons? First, we had the impromptu meeting, according to the Washington Post, on Monday. Then we had the Department of Justice and the State Department saying, we're not going to release all this stuff until the middle of her first term. Then we had the weekend of Fourth of July meeting with the FBI, so that nobody covers that. And then just to make sure that there's no other attention paid, uh, we had a guy who was part of a U.N. scandal where they were having, yet again, 20 years after the fact, when Bill Clinton was running in 1996, we had this massive corruption from Chinese government officials and Chinese businessmen admittingly buying influence in the election with the Democrat Party and with the Clintons at the time. Remember Charlie Tree? Well, he was running some other Chinese businessmen, and they were uh, buying influence from a guy named Ash. And as they were going through and giving immunity to these people and moving up the chain of command, Ash was begging for some kind of a deal with these people to talk. And interestingly enough, he died of a heart attack. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. That was the first story. The second story was he got his throat crushed as he was doing a barbell workout. <laughs> okay. Another one of the 46 people who die around the Clintons. It is the same M.O., the same methods that they use all the time, folks. They know how to play you. Don't let them play you. When we come back, we're going to talk about this Tesla crash and where they're headed with our cars. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host. 
Hope you're having a good time on this 4th of July weekend. We want to say thank you to you. So we've put in some 4th of July specials this weekend. We have deep discounts on a wide variety of products at InfoWars store. We've got 20% off Survival Shield X2 Nason Iodine. We have 20% off Alexa Pure water filters, 20% off Alexa Pure air filters, as well as 20 to 40% off all uh, selected InfoWars select storable foods. You'll find all of this at InfoWarsStore.com. We hope that this will be a win-win weekend for all of us. Fighting together for liberty, keeping independent media independent. That's the way we fund ourselves so we don't become dependent on sponsors who can pull the rug out from under us if the government tells them to or we do something that is controversial. We want to have that kind of independence. So we fund our operation this way. And it's a way that you can provide for your health, for your family's security, safety, and health. So we have a deep discount on a lot of different products this weekend. The July 4th Mega Specials, 20% off Survival Shield X2, Alexa Pure Water Filters, Alexa Pure Air Filters, and 20 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Foods at InfoWarsStore.com while supplies last. I want to talk real quickly about a couple of things that uh, people have sent me about veterans who are being given the cold shoulder uh, for medals of honor by the uh, Presidential Review Commission, uh, by the people in Washington. I, I think it's very telling, especially when we look at it this uh, 4th of July weekend. Uh, I had uh, one individual who is, uh, does a lot of stuff uh, pro bono uh, for veterans in Chicago, and he wanted to tell me a story about a 92-year-old veteran from World War II. His name is Papa Duke. They called him the Indian in the service because he is a great-grandson of Chief Running Bull. Uh, he is a Sioux Indian. And there was a lot of, uh, because he only had one witness, they're holding back his Medal of Honor. And yet we've had Barack Obama come in and give wave that rule for the Buffalo Soldiers and for others posthumously. And yet this is someone who is still alive, okay? But it's a pattern of behavior. There's also a story that we've got here from the Daily Mail, a Green Beret who fought off 10 Taliban fighters as his comrades lay trapped or wounded, speaks out as he's denied the Medal of Honor despite the recommendations of his commanders. Okay, this is Army Sergeant First Class Earl Plumley. He rushed to the site of a massive explosion in August of 2013 after a car bomb went off 85 miles southwest of Kabul. He ended up facing down 10 Taliban attackers, several of whom were wearing suicide vests, practically alone as his fellow soldiers were wounded. And uh, one got locked inside of their truck. Okay, and then we've got another article here. This is uh, No Vietnam Vet Has Received the Medal of Honor It's Time. This is Major General Patrick H. Brady. who received the Medal of Honor as a dust-off medevac pilot in Vietnam. He says, amazingly, no individual veteran or unit has received a congressional gold medal specifically for service in Vietnam, he writes. You know, when I looked at this and I thought about what Obama is doing, he doesn't honor these veterans who are fighting these wars, whether you, uh, you know, whatever you think of, of the wars, these people were doing what they thought were right. They were trying to uh, fight for this country. And the fact that these Vietnam veterans would not get this and the fact that we've got our imam in the White House, Obama, turning our military into a sitcom Made me think back, you know, this guy is a medevac pilot in Vietnam. Made me think back to MASH. Made me think back to Corporal Klinger. Here's a little clip from this from MeTV. MeTV presents The Klinger Collection. And away we go. First, this lovely cinnamon-colored ensemble with a fox stole. Next, a spaghetti-strapped floor-length gown. I don't usually wear floor-length during the day. <laughs> <laughs> this was for getting a Section 8. He was dressing up. They all knew that it was a fraud. They knew that he wasn't a tranny, okay? But they wanted to, he wanted to get out of the service. He wanted to get a Section 8 saying that he was psychologically disturbed. You know who's psychologically disturbed now? You know who needs a Section 8? It's our own government, the people running this clown show here. When I look at that and I look at all those different uh, items that uh, Klinger was wearing, and it was just this last week we had the final report from Benghazi saying that Hillary Clinton and the State Department were telling the soldiers they had to get in uniform, then they had to get out of uniform, they had to do this. You know, it's like, what outfit are they going to wear? That was more important to them. How this looked was more important to them than saving lives. But, of course, they don't really care how it looks 
when Bill Clinton meets with the attorney general as his wife and he are under investigation by the same person. Now, before we run out of time here, I want to talk a little bit about uh, another military person. Of course, this was a Navy SEAL who died in this, this self-driving car. The first person so far to die in one of these incredibly safe cars. You know, they were going to put an end to all deaths on the highway, weren't they? We've been told that endlessly. You know, we got 30,000 people a year dying, they say, and we're going to take that down to zero. Nobody's going to die, Volvo says, in their cars. And so we see the same thing from Tesla. And as I look at this, I say, you know, they, they come back and they're absolutely unrepentant, Tesla is. They say, well, you know, if he hadn't hit that uh, truck from the side, if he'd hit it from the front or the back, then he would have survived. And, of course, they know because they've had a lot of their self-driving cars hit trucks from the front and back. It's, this isn't the first accident they've had. It's the first fatality they've had. Going back to May the 26th, Fortune magazine, another driver blames Tesla for an autopilot crash. They say... Uh, this is one individual took a video of this, and it hit a car, okay? So he's following behind a car in cruise control mode. He's got the car driving. There's a black car in front of him. It swerves to avoid somebody that stopped in his lane. And not only does the autopilot not stop, but he says, what's worse, the car actually sped up before it hit the brakes, okay? Hits it harder. So the crash of one is didn't work. They say this has been the subject of debate of late uh, after two Model S drivers, and this is back in May. Uh, earlier that month, blamed the car's self-driving features for causing a crash. One of the drivers accused the technology of driving the car into a trailer, smashing his car's windshield. Another driver claimed the car's autopilot didn't engage when she assumed it would prevent colliding with the rear of another car. Do you see how they're lulling you into a state of passivity? What will happen to the insurance rates for these Tesla cars, will they go up? Of course they won't. Because big business and big government wants this. They want this very badly because it's all about control. And when we look at what's happening, the way it came out, uh, we got a, a story up on the LA Times via Drudge. Tesla and Google are both driving toward autonomous vehicles. Which company is taking the better route? And they try to spin this by saying, well, okay, Tesla is giving you... Uh, a system where you have to be able to take control back and you have the opportunity to take control back. Google says, no, we want fully autonomous systems where you won't have any control at all. And those will be safer because there won't be any need for you to all, all of a sudden wake up from, you know, falling asleep. We've seen the pictures of the guy who was in the Tesla in traffic, fast asleep. And people took videos of that and said, look at how scary this is. Or you won't be watching a Harry Potter movie as this Navy SEAL who died was uh, and have to get your attention real quick so that you can uh, pull this thing back. No, they say we're going to take a different approach. Google says we're going to have it fully autonomous and we're going to take away your brakes and your steering wheel. And I have to look at this and say, well, I'm not really sure that I want to do that. OK. Uh, when we look at Google, who wants control of um, all of your driving, no steering, no brakes, we look at Uber that wants to control all of your ownership. They don't want you to own a car. You're going to get the car from them, okay? And I, I guess if you put those two together, you got Google and Uber, you got Goobermint, and it's the Goobermint that is run by these corporations that wants to control all of your transportation, folks. That's what this ultimately boils down to. You know, when they say the people who are getting in these Tesla cars, they have to acknowledge that this is beta software. And I have to say, I've written software. I've been in that industry. You don't put beta software in a life or death situation like this. And it isn't just the people who are in the Tesla cars who are acknowledging that they're doing a beta test. It's all the people, the other people who are on the road. You know, when I'm on the road, and I've got some idiot in an untested piece of software driving his car in a Tesla vehicle. And he said, I'm okay with that. Well, you know what? Nobody asked my permission. I didn't give my permission for him to do a beta test with, the lives, with my lives and my family's life, okay? Because I'm on the road as well. It is absolutely inexcusable. Do you think there's going to be an investigation? Do you think Hillary will get indicted? <laughs> of course there won't be. The government wants this. Google, Uber, the government, they want control of everything. This is not autopilot. This is not rocket. When you got autopilot, uh, a great uh, point that was made by uh, an auto writer, uh, Eric Peters. 
He said autopilot on an airplane is done when you've got the planes spaced out. They're not anywhere close to each other. That's not the situation here unless you're going to have cars spaced uh, 30 minutes apart. Okay? It's not the same thing. Join us tomorrow. Alex will be back. 11 Central.